And then if it drops again to, you know, 45, then buy another, which this means that you plan for it to drop at least five times. If it drops below five times, so it's like now it's $10,000, then you're in a bad shape, right? And, but uh, you, it's like playing poker. You never want to put money in if you can't follow. If you're like put money in and someone shows a strong, like puts, puts money, more money and you're like, oh, I'm scared. Then you back away. That's not good. If you put money in a stock because it dropped, you want to make sure you can always follow afterwards. Now, when it goes up, um, that's a weird moment usually because um, it's like, well, it's already really high. Do, should I sell it, right? Because you want to buy low, sell high, which is what I usually stick to. Emotional stability is the most important. Uh, but it looks like there's so much momentum could charge higher. So nowadays what I do is optimize for my happiness. So uh, what does that mean? It means that I sell a third of what I have. Uh, you know, roughly speaking with variations, but a third means that if I sell a third of what I have and then it drops massively again, then I'm really, I feel really good. It's, hey, look, I proactively, you know, cashed out at that point, a third of it. So I feel really smart, but if it keeps going up and up and up and up, I still have two thirds. I'm like, wow, I'm so happy. My two thirds of my money is, is growing more and more. And then it goes higher, higher. I might sell a third of that it goes higher. I might sell a third of that. When it drops, I buy 20%. So there, so it's a very conservative model. I have friends who listen to my advice. They get all in. They just buy Bitcoin and Tesla, and they just keep it for the long haul. And they do, they do make like some, you know, literally 10x their money. And they're like, "You, I thank you." But I don't, I don't do that. I think I'm a bit more conservative on that. So I like to when it's low, buy low, but don't go all in. So I, because it could go lower. Now the problem with that, the risk, for quote unquote, is that it drops by a bit. You put in 20 percent, 200 dollars out of your thousand. And then it suddenly goes up, right? And then you can get upset like, oh, my thousand dollars could have made so much money, but it's only 200. That's fine. You know, your $800 cash is always useful somewhere else, uses, uses wisely, uh, but you're not risking more. But if it drops more, then you put in $200 more, you put more. So you're betting that it's not gonna drop to like the trash can. And if it does, you're just, you just have to hold. Like don't, if you believe in the edible future, if it's lower, then it's just on a discount, right? And you would only sell because of two things. One, you need cash urgently. That's when you're kind of screwed. Uh, or two, you no longer believe that's inevitable future. The example I give in my OP video is that it's like investing is like um, a man walking his dog and the dog is like hyper running around chasing birds and squirrels and running to bushes. And, uh, but he's going to his office, right? And everyone pays attention to the dog. Where's the dog? It's going up and down, all that stuff. What's going on? But what you really should pay attention to is where the man is walking. You know, the man is walking in like, I don't know, 10 miles per hour, to his office. So eventually the dog's gonna be there too. Um, so you would only change your investment if you believe the man is actually not going to his office, he's going somewhere else, or you know, he's got an accident, he's going to the hospital, right? And so besides that, it's all noise and emotional stability is most important. I, I, my wife works in finance, she's very, she's very smart, but I do notice that when, when it's losing money, when Bitcoin's going down, she's like, oh, it's so scary, you should sell it, you should sell it. And when it's going, to, it's like, oh wow, so much momentum you buy it. And I'm like, that's the opposite of what people should do, right? Now. It's it's you shouldn't sell low, buy high. You should buy low, buy low, sell high. So literally, like when it goes down, I just buy, buy, buy. And when it goes up, I sell, sell, sell. And eventually, when you do that, you get all the money back that you put in, and now it's all like money on the house. And that really gives you a lot of emotional stability because you can lose all of it and still be fine. So I I can tell you, literally following this strategy. Just on crypto, I've made over a million dollars in the past couple of years. Um, and, um, and I've made money on Tesla, I made money on Doc, Doc. I pretty much made money on all my big bets so far. I don't think I have a big bet that I lost money on. But, I, but again, it's the emotional stability is the big most important because there will be family members, people who love you, care about you, who says, oh, I just read the news, Bitcoin dropped by 20%. It's going to do, be doing right. You should go sell it. Or maybe I'm really worried about you. And then it's like, hey, you know, if a year ago you said, oh, Bitcoin is will drop to $40,000, it's going to die. Everyone's going to think it's a joke because at that point, 19000 was the highest point. And everyone thought that's like already a bubble. It's going to burst, right? Um, so it's just like, hey, just if you believe that's the future, just take it. And when Bitcoin dropped from 21 k to 3000 I bought a lot. Uh, I, I, I'll first say I bought at 12,000, 14,000, which I lost money when it dropped to 3,000, right? 9,000 I bought, it dropped to three. So, I, so those lost money, but when it dropped to 3,000, I also bought, remember the trenches. Um, that is important 
like the scary thing is just that, hey, is it going to die? Is it going to be wiped out? Is it all going to go to zero? That's the scary thing. People, people say it's scary to catch a falling knife, right? Your hand could bleed. Um, but I already saw in the past five years pattern recognition that there are already so many things that could kill Bitcoin. There's, there's the China regulation. There's the government trying to remove it. There's all these things. It did not die. And so, and so if it didn't die from all these things, now it has more infrastructure. More banks are using it. The foundation is better. More people recognize. More people are doing it. So I, I, there's nothing to, that shows that it will die. It's still to me the inevitable future. So at three thousand, I I bought a bunch, and then, oh, but then I you know I started selling a third of that, and like when it's like fifteen thousand, start selling a third of that, and when it's like twenty five, forty thousand, and sixty thousand. So I, I got a lot of cash back. So so like I said, my strategy is it's relatively conservative in the, that even though I believe all this will be or 10 times more, 10 years later, let's say, um, I'm cashing out, I'm cashing out, cashing out. I'm making sure that I, I get money back. So um, so if, if it crashes, if bad things happen, it is, it is that. So, so yeah, um, invest in human progress, technology, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto uh, are useful. Um, like don't only put in money that you can, that you, that you can uh, afford to lose really. Um, you know, any any advisor that says, oh, because I recently my friend sent me this, like Bitcoin will have to go up. It has to because the limit is enough and people will have to. So this is some, this will happen for sure. It's like anyone who says that, that's a lie. That's just BS. You know, you can only the best you can say it, it, it's very likely. It's very reasonable to assume that it could go up. And so, um, yeah, or I believe it will go up. So um, then there's people say, well, if you want to be very safe, like some people do. Some very smart friends I have says, hey, all this digital system could still crumble down. At that point, gold will be strong again. Gold right now is really weird. I think a lot of people are moving their gold. People who used to invest in gold are moving that to crypto. It's their new gold. But if crypto one day uh, shown to fail and people still believe don't, don't believe in fiat, which is US dollars or whatever, all that money who used to find safety in crypto will go back to gold. So, so, and uh, my wife likes real estate. So real estate is always kind of nice. It's also, you know, same thing, right? Real estate, it's always a safe, if, if safe, if you have a good location, it's an available future. Like over time, it will increase. Uh, so unless you believe it's no longer going to increase, then um, you should always, you know, people only sell at when they make money. They don't, they don't sell a house if it's lower than what they bought it, unless they're in urgent need of money or they believe this place will be a like toxic wasteland and they're not going to do it. So it's the same principle basically. So hopefully that paints a picture of uh, investment strategies. Uh, but, but yeah, um, these are things I didn't, th by the way, Zoom, I did exit because um, when I heard this, there's all this complication with China, the servers are there, privacy. I wasn't sure what, what was there. So whether that's Innovel future is challenged. So I, I I feel like I should have sold two thirds and kept one third, at least kept 20%, but I sold just, just to stay clean, like in terms of having my portfolio cleaner. Um, but yeah, so, so I do accept time. So whatever I said today doesn't mean that you should go buy right now. I bought at a much lower point, but yeah, right now crypto did drop. So I, I went in to get more, um, it could drop further, which means but remember, I only went in with 20% of what I could put in. So I'll put another 20%, another 20%, 20%. I think if you really follow the strategy, the only way you lose is you need urgently need money. It's it dropped, you need early money. So you can't wait to to for it to go back up if you or you're just you just don't see it correctly. It's not the future, it's actually going downhill. So yeah.